Where you found us a basket, we say, hands that with clay, which means we live by the river. True, sir. We have the utmost respect for water. Respect, respect, respect. Respect for the land, respect for the water, respect for people, respect for everything. On behalf of the uh, Loudoun Tribal Council, the Native Village of Galena, and the City of Galena, we'd like to welcome each and every one of you to this first ever Yukon River Intertribal Watershed Protection Summit. We're in the process of starting talking about uh, to each individual. 56 leaders and elders from 34 tribes and First Nations came together and they spent three days telling the story of the Yukon River. Hearts weighed heavy as the story of the river was told. I have a dump that's unbelievable. The tons and tons of toxic waste. I've seen fish with growth under them. Fifth side. I've seen moose with growth under them. Fifth side. And that's what pollution does to the animals that we live on. Air Force, military, and different governments have left a lot of big messes throughout our territories that's affecting us. You know, right now up in our neighborhood, we have a major oil pipeline and road running through our traditional lands there. Mining is a big one for us, and I was amazed. When I started doing this work, when I learned a little bit about it, I was amazed at what goes into the lake from those mines. It's heavy metals. It's killer. We see people getting cancer and we say, oh, they, they, must, they caught it. But we have to find out uh, what's producing it. We are consumers. We do consume things. We do pollute. And we've just got to start looking out in our own backyard and taking care. What are we pouring down our sink? And what are we throwing on the land or into the water? It's up to us to educate ourselves. We can't wait for the government to do that. I would really like to see us start testing our creeks and lakes and river on a regular basis all along the river and compile it to where it's available for everybody on the river. The first thing that I would recommend is that you agree, all of you, to the first element of cleaning up the water, the land, and the air. And then all of you sign it. Can you imagine the impact that it's going to have on the politicians in Alaska and Canada? The only way we could solve this problem is by, by, by unity. We all have to stick together and fight it as one. Well, I'm hoping that we achieve that here. If somebody should put a big rock down here, and two of us go down there and try to lift it. We won't lift it. But all of us get together and go down there and put our hands in. We will lift it over our heads. Try to get this thing cleaned up. It's your life. It's your land. It's your water. It's the life of your great, great 
grandchildren that's going to come after you. thank all the people of Mount Willis, the tribe of Mount Willis, that had opened their doors to welcome all the people from uh, headwaters down to Yukon River. The uh, Eskimos and Indians used to fight against each other. Now we're fighting for a common cause, uh, trying to clean up our, our uh, mighty Yukon River. The river gives so much to us. What can we give back is the question. My grandmother used to say, if you treat the river with respect, the river will treat you back with respect. The river is our livelihood. It is our food source, our subsistence way of life. First of all, I'd like to honor the feather where it came from, Eagle. And we're speaking for Eagle just like everything else. We're speaking for air and water and land and life out there. In this weather we got out there, it's not, not too good to me. It's hard for animals. Real hard. We don't know what, what's going to happen. They said this hard time is coming. He's here now. I'm continuing to find that we've got something wrong with our waters, as we all know it right now. We've got a detachment of lead and copper. And I don't know these other testing and inorganic contaminants, chemicals that I've also sent out. Uh, due to the mining activities that went on back in the late 70s. In my lifetime, in my short lifetime, I do under ice fishing, and number of times I check my net, and I put out plastic bags. There's lots and lots of people that rely heavily on subsistence that run into these type of situations that we are not pleased with. I mean, we are not pleased with this type of situation when I catch no fish and I pull out a candy bar wrap for payday when I have nothing to eat on the table. Just recently, YTG, Yukon Territorial Government, opened up bids on our traditional territory for oil and gas development. It's going to be one of our toughest fights we always say the heart of our country is the caribou. We've been fighting this issue for years now, and now we have to deal with environmental issues as well. My name is Shannon Carroll, and I'm 18 years old. I'm representing Canyon Village, and we are here because we are concerned about our generation and the future generation because we need a healthy country to survive. Thank you. Mountain Village 36, tribes and First Nations came, and they allowed um, government, federal, and environmental organizations to attend. And collectively, they all agreed that they would go home and reduce the use of styrofoam and plastics in their community. They would improve their landfills. They'd bring environmental education into their schools. That's what this meeting is about, working together. We can't 
uh, work alone. We get ideas from other villages, from other heads. That's what you call working together. We don't feel like we're standing alone in a fight to help us keep our Alaska clean. Tribes and First Nations signed the Intertribal Accord at the headwaters in the Upper Lakes. Drums were beating, dancers were dancing, leaders were signing the Accord. Every time another leader signed the Accord, the place erupted. There was at least 300 people there. And everyone in that room knew that history was being made. Today's signing means to me um, an awareness, I think, for the world that we mean business when we say we're going to work together to protect, enhance, and keep this water clean and clean it up for ourselves and the future generations. May the Great Spirit be with you. We have the utmost respect for water. Our ancient ancestors tell us water is life in itself. Treat water with respect. If we can come together and pray together for a brighter future for our children, is it the river that's doing that for us or are we doing that for the river? Healthier water is a very good thing for people to get their focus on, but in reality, it's healthier people that we need. Are we ready? Give it back to the river. It is the water that's being cleansed, but it's also the, the people, too. We're, we're cleaning up the water inside of us. The more turbid the water, the more likely it is to carry contaminants. The clearer the water, the less likely it will. Once we destroy it, I think it, it becomes impossible to make it whole again, which is why I think that the work that you are doing here it is so powerful and so important because you are stepping in before it happens. Look around and see the types of uh, potentially hazardous types of waste. You know, look for things like car batteries and used oil and oil filters. Of course, there's open burning right here, as we can see. 
I see lots of like recyclables that could easily be recycled and stuff. You know, like they have this recycling center here in town now, and I guess it's fairly new. They just started it, so maybe it's going to take a while for the people to get get used to recycling. If we just make people aware one at a time, if we make each of our family members aware, and then they do the same thing, that's something. Something big can come out of this. You know, the funnest thing I did so far this week was going out on the river. I've never been on the river because I, I lived in lakes. The headwaters where I live feeds the Yukon River, but we have two totally different cultures. So it, it was really interesting to come out here and see where the water goes once it leaves the lakes where I live, and then to be able to come out here on the river and take part in fishing and seeing fishing reels for the first time and hanging fish and smoking the salmon and then actually being able to eat it later on. And I've been eating salmon all week now. Our Kuchin people, we work together thousands of years. That's one of the reasons we're here. We survive, sharing, respect. Uh, a big river, a lot of tributaries to the Yukon River. It's very difficult a task for a steering committee. I said, we came a long ways, we're going to go a long ways by God's help. On behalf of uh, Chief and Council and the citizens of Trondike Witchin, I'd just like to welcome you to our traditional territory. Um, we're all linked to the river and we're all connected to the river. One of the largest rivers in North America and I think we're all privileged that uh, uh, we're a part of this river. It's very good to see that uh, there's roughly or approximately 60 tribes and First Nations governments that have come together that uh, have recognized the impacts that are, is doing harm to our waterways, which will affect our traditional way of life, the fish, the gathering we do from the waters. And what we're going to be looking for in our fish outside is, is this particular worm. They, they kind of coil up in the cavity of the fish, and they get into the muscle of the fish as well. And, and this is a problem parasite, and it can cause flu-like symptoms. Oh my God! Okay, and what kind of parasite is this? This looks like it looks like the anisakis. This looks like the landworm. Where it's saying, you know, you, you, you want to be real careful and uh, cook or freeze the meat first. I believe we are the scientists of our world. A group of our elders uh, are working on uh, global warming, uh, climate change. Uh, from the Aboriginal version, not the scientific version, we have noticed changes in the way our Mother Earth has changed in the last 60 years. So if we had been testing this creek for the past, you know, a couple of years, and it's, the dissolved oxygen was always around 11.8, and then we came here one day and tested it, and it, it read 9, and then, then you would be like, hey, there's something going on here. I wonder what it is, you know. The most important thing is that we develop some kind of a capacity to get the villages and tribes to develop a water quality monitoring program to kind of bring it into their high schools, too. 
That way, when things start to change, then you can see a trend, and then you can start to develop a hypothesis. Then you'll know what kind of questions to ask, and then where to spend money to, and what to test for. So this is the dump right here? Yeah, it's this is an interesting exercise in point source contamination. Just drop it in? Yep. And then, and who would want to drink water from a river that uh, we're not even taking care of? I haven't seen anybody jump up and down and holler, uh, hey, I'm here, I want dirty water, you know. I haven't really heard that yet. We can do anything. And if we put our heart's prayer, make this river a healing river, make it prosperous, make it clean place for the fish, make it so that our, our future generation is going to be clean and healthy from it. Hey, hey, The uh, city of Galena has uh, been considering uh, the possibility of applying for a nuclear reactor in Galena. During this summit, um, the leaders were able to take on one of the most difficult issues that they are facing. They have high, high energy costs and they are desperately trying to come up with solutions. And one of the solutions is to look at all types of energy sources, from potential nuclear energy to natural gas. Based on the available information, Kalina believes that the risk to, of adverse health or environmental effects from the proposed facility are very low. The reactor is small, varied, and very low pressure. The Nuclear Regulatory Commission came here from Washington, D.C. to consult with the tribal leaders to find out how they want to be consulted with in the future. That's why uh, being able to, to deal with the, uh, the Watershed Council is very helpful to us because it uh, it brings the concerns not only of the the uh, the Alaska the United States portion of the Yukon River but also the the First Nations on the Canadian side. Up next, uh, we're going to have uh, Terry Lehman and Frederick Sherman from the Navajo Nation, and they're going to talk about uranium mining in their area. We have over 1,100 um, uranium mine sites that are located on our reservation. What we discovered was that um, out of the 100 water sources, over 30 of them were impacted with heavy metals, uranium, and radionuclides. Some of the public health impacts that came about from this whole um, legacy was uh, kidney illnesses and lung cancer, respiratory illnesses that we saw in, in our communities. How safe is this really? Why do we have to do this on the Yukon River? That's my food, you know, that's not just me, but there's thousands of people that live off of this food that comes up through this river. The leaders have agreed by consensus to prevent the nuclear reactor and clean it from happening. We're gaining a unity uh, that has uh, such a powerful voice and we just don't want to be uh, left out. We want to be part of it. The Yukon River is an international treasure. There's a sacred resource that the leaders are protecting for all people. So water is it's very, very important, but it's also important for us to realize that that's who we are too. You know, when you look at this, the water, that's who we are. That's what we are right now. There is no way that we can do anything without clean water. That's as simple as that. I probably never, never in my lifetime be able to drink water out of the Yukon, but my kids and their, you know, their, their kids will be able to do that. And that's what exactly what we're working for. <laughs>